Hello, it's April 24th, 2020. One of the topics of conversation that I've had with people over the years is whether or not we are, as Christians, living in the last times or the last days. I've been asked that question before by several people as to whether or not I think that we are living in the last days, and it is an interesting conversation to have. It's an interesting question to ask. And I always answer it with the idea same answer is that yes we are but that the last days i mean it's a relative term we are living in the last days but we have been living in the last days for quite some time and i was reading in the book of james and came across this passage in james 5 i wanted to read this morning and then did a little cross-referencing about this idea of the final time for the earth the last days of the earth we read in james chapter number five and verse number seven be patient therefore brethren Unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, and the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Now in this passage, James says a couple of things. In verse 7, uh, he talks about uh, the, uh, to, uh, that we ought to be patient unto the coming of the Lord. And this idea of the Lord's return was being taught from the time that Jesus Christ, uh, before Jesus Christ left the earth, he gave parables about it. He said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man who he compared him sometimes to a ruler, sometimes to a householder who had gone on a journey and would one day return. And this was an allusion in his teaching to the fact that he was going to leave, but also return. He was asked of his disciples uh, when the end time would be, and he mentioned that. He gave some prophecies there and told them what type of things to look for in those prophecies. So, I mean, this idea of the end of the world, this idea of the return of Christ, is well rooted in Scripture, and and uh, James here reminds us of that very thing, or reminds those to whom he was writing, and then to us also, that we ought to be patient, that means enduring, long-suffering, uh, therefore, unto the coming of the Lord, reminding us again that the Lord is returning. But he says something else. He says, um, verse 8, Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now, he's making a very important statement there, saying that the coming of the Lord is getting closer and closer. Now, that just uh, that does make sense. I mean, every day that passes, we are closer and closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. But every day that passes, we are closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. It is coming closer and closer and closer every single day. Then he makes another statement in verse number 9. He says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. So this, this phrase right here, the judge standeth before the door, uh, gives to me by implication that Christ is ready to return. It is, it is time, but... James wrote that then, 2,000 years ago, that the judge standeth at the door. So for the last 2,000 years, Christ has been ready to return. So why hasn't he returned? Well, the Bible tells us that here in James chapter 5 and verse 7 also. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. God is the one in his patience that is waiting for the correct time for Christ to return. Consider this. God gave the promise to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. That was a promise made by God. And then we read in the scripture that it was at the fullness of time that Christ was born and that Christ came. But the time from the giving of the promise to the time of Christ's actual coming was 4,000 years. Now, it was the hope and desire over that period of time, especially in the nation of Israel, as they understood more and more of the prophecies of the Lord. It was the desire in each generation for that prophecy to be fulfilled. Yet, it took 4,000 years. 
And it has been the desire of, of men and Christians since the leaving of Christ to see the fulfillment of the Christ return to this earth. It will happen in the fullness of time. One of the reasons it's important for us to understand that God is long-suffering and patient as he awaits the ripening of the earth, if you will, if you, as he awaits the fullness of the fruit of this earth, if you will. It's important for us to understand that so that we will continue also in patience and long-suffering for the coming of the Lord. Jesus gave several prophecies about his return in the Gospels of the way the earth would be upon his return. He mentioned wars and rumors of wars. He mentioned earthquakes in diverse places. He mentions pestilence and death. He mentions also that many would rise up and claim to be Christ or claim to know where Christ was. And we can look today and say, all those things are going on today, and they are. But all those things have been going on for a long time as well. Every generation tends to look at prophecy through the lens of current events. But we must keep this in mind. When it comes to the return of the Lord and being in the last days, James said, it's coming, it's nigh, the judge is at the door. But only God knows when. We tend to, we tend to uh, interpret prophecy through the lens of current events, but God is the one that knows when it's going to happen. So don't be uh, uh, swayed or pulled away from the Lord and having patience in the Lord by those who may claim to know when Christ is returning or who may claim to know where Christ is or even say that he already has. When Christ comes, we will know. But let us endure with patience and long suffering. As for being in the last times, that has been established in Scripture and other places as well. Let me read for you from 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 18. John wrote here, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So John, this was written, again, close to 2,000 years ago. And John was saying at that time, that they were in the last time. Were they in the last time? Yes, they were. But how long is the last time? I don't know. When will be the culmination of all of those prophecies and all of those things? I don't know. I look forward into prophecy as though I'm looking through a, 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 a dark glass, a tinted glass. I can't see that far. I can't see ahead. Christ himself said he did not know when he was going to return, but only the Father did. Only the Father did. But here John reminds them at that time, they were in the last time. Uh, let me read from the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. And verse number 20. And we'll read into it beginning in verse 18. Peter writes, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And there again, Peter makes reference to the fact that they, Christ had come during those last times. And that again is mentioned in the book of Hebrews, chapter number one and verse number two. Reading verses one and two. Hebrews says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So the last days began when Christ himself came to this earth, and for the past 2,000 years we've been in those last times. And now God is imploring us and reminding us that he is patient and long-suffering. He's looking for the fulfillment and the, of times and for the fullness of times, and that we as well must be patient and long-suffering, waiting for the return of our Savior. There will be many that come out with claims. There will be many who speak to prophecy, and then there have been many that have throughout the, uh, the generations, throughout the decades and centuries, over the last 2,000 years, who have spoken to it. But it will come someday. When? I don't know. I wish I knew. But God knows. And I can trust God because he knows. And we will see you all very soon. God bless you.